UFC on Fox, Henderson versus Diaz, or Diaz versus Henderson, however it's being billed. Starting at the bottom, working my way up. Here we go. Scott Jorgens and John Albert. Scott Jorgens is by unanimous decision. Why? Better wrestling. More cardio. Uh, John Albert has some definitive problems when it comes to getting beyond the first round. Um, and he also has some problems keeping his mental t um, his mental um, focus. So, yeah. Got to go with Jorgens. In. Side note, though. Very sad to see a guy who used to fight for the Bantamweight title on the Facebook card. That is... Especially when we see what some of the undercard is. Holy shit. Uh, Dennis Seaver versus Nan Van. Dennis Seaver. Decision. Fam's got a good chin, but... Smaller, not as good of a striker, not as good of a wrestler, probably a better grappler, but won't be able to get it there. If he does get it there, he won't be able to submit Seaver. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it, really, as far as that fight goes. That's just a mismatch. Nam Fam only beats people who don't belong in the OC. Dennis Seaver's got wins over, you know, relatively high up guys in the division. Uh, Diego Nunez, who looks really good lately. He's beaten Matt Wyman. He's beaten George Sauteropoulos, Andre Winner. Okay, Andre Winner, not so much. Uh, yeah, but Sauteropoulos, Wyman, Nunez, those are three guys that, if you put in there with Nam Fam, would be instant victories for them. So, there you go. Tim Means, Abel Trujillo. People are kind of crapping on Tim Means. I did it when he debuted. I didn't think much of him, but he, he really, he looks pretty technical. He uses his reach. Stefan Struve, please watch because this is how you do it. Um, he's switched to lightweight. April Trujillo is a pile of shit as a person and as a fighter. So Tim Means, TKO, go, move on. Uh, Darren Crookshank, Henry Martinez. I had hopes for Henry Martinez, and it has not happened. Um, and that's it. Still taking him by unanimous decision here over Crookshank. Um, Crookshank in the end just mentally such a front runner it's, it's not a cardio issue but like he goes out there and if he's not beating you he shuts down and I think Martinez has the skills to keep it close and then make that happen so you know I'm such Henry Martinez Joe Proctor Rams in the gym Rams in the gym wins by submission or decision I don't care this fight serves no purpose I don't understand why Joe Proctor has a UFC contract I mean I understand yes he was on the ultimate fighter yeah, he beat Jeremy Larson on the finale. That tends to mean you get a contract. Jeremy Larson's a pile of crap as a fighter. Not like Drew Jello, who is a bad person. Um, but yeah, Ramsey and Jim. Um, better wrestler. That's Proctor's main game plan. Better grappler. That's also a practice thing. I guess I'd give Proctor the edge on the feet, but I just don't seem to be able to keep it there. Um, Rafael Suncow versus Mike Easton. Uh, a good fight, interesting fight, two guys who both have solid grappling backgrounds. Sun Cow is a black belt. Not sure under who. I'm hoping it's not his brother. <laughs> um, but, you know, back-to-back -back wins over Johnny Eduardo and Issei Tamora since dropping to 135. So he's been doing pretty well with the with the new weight class. As for Mike Easton, um, undefeated in the UFC with three straight wins over Byron Bloodworth, Jared Papazian, and Ivan Menjivar. Only one of those is really a tremendously notable one, and that's the last one against Menjivar. Uh, Bloodworth is still in the UFC, but I don't really foresee him staying. And Papazian is in the UFC, but now fighting at flyweight. Um, that being said, you know the win over Menjivar is bigger than anything Sun Cow's achieved recently. He's been around forever, and he's done a lot of things. Um... But uh, I have to see Easton, you know, superior wrestling background. That's been a problem for Sun Cal in the past. I think on the feet, Easton has the edge. I think on the ground, if he takes it there, he has enough of a top game that he can neutralize the Sun Cow. A Sun Cow's not going to get on top. Easton by decision. Picking a lot of decisions, and that disturbs me. Jeremy Stevens, Eve Edwards, I'm going with a no pick. Um, and the reason is Stevens, prison. No idea how the whole legal troubles is um, going to affect him. Um, I did the pick the breakdown of this fight before he got arrested. Pick Stevens then. Gun to my head, I'm still picking Stevens. Eve Edwards has got a suspect chin and little even hits like a Mack truck. But uh, I, I, I don't know. It's just it, it's just weird, this whole situation with Jeremy Stevens. And uh, as a result, 
If you're looking to put money on this fight, don't. Um, Mike Swick, Matt Brown. Only one outcome here I can really see. I mean, uh, Kaz um, had, you know, this going the distance. Um, I just don't see it. Matt Brown is a... He's not a bad grappler. It's just that, you know, some fighters have that ability to, uh, I get caught or choke. I'm going to work my way out of it. I'm fine. Matt Brown, it's, I get caught in a choke, a panic, a tap out. Swick's got a good guillotine. You see where I'm going with this. Um, that, I think, Swick, just better athlete. Um, a career that's been heavily, heavily deranged by injuries, but uh, when healthy, uh, a better athlete, quicker, stronger, more athletic, um, better wrestling, I think, uh, and slightly edge on the feet. So I, I can't see how this goes any other way other than Swick submitting Matt Brown. Um, Roy McDonald, BJ Penn. Questions about BJ Penn are always, is he in good shape? The videos seem to suggest he is. But um, after the whole retirement deal with Nick Diaz, the drama of am I fighting, am I not fighting, I'm going to fight, I'm, I'm not going to fight, I'm, I'm, um, I, you wonder where his head's at, uh, or at least I do. Um, when it comes down to it, is I, I keep thinking, I'm like, can I really pick BJ Penn, a guy who I've always had question marks about, uh, when he's basically flirting with retirement, you question his seriousness level in the sport, you know, I gotta, I gotta go with Roy McDonald, not by a finish, because it, it's BJ Penn, he's still physically got the skills, he's still durable as all heck. Outside of Nick Diaz and to an extent GSP, we, we, we've seen nothing happen to him in the ring that um, even leaves a mark on his face, really. So I have to go with a decision for Rory McDonald, uh, but we'll see. Um, bit of an upset here I'm picking. Shogun, Alexander Gustafson, um, taking Gustafson by unanimous decision. I think that you look at the Tiago Silva fight, and not that Tiago Silva is as good as Shogun. He's not, but uh, he brings a certain a similar style striking to the game and he could not do anything about the reach um you look at shogun in his fight with brandon vera i mean he dominated that fight he, he crushed vera um it, it should have been finished several times but when vera was able to get behind the jab and start working his reach a little bit you know that was when he had success Augustus taller faster uh better technical striker and has a you know longer reach, and that kind of makes me worry about that. And uh, eventually, talk me over into picking Gustafson by decision. Um, the other thing is, of course, the health of Shogun. It's 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 always in question. Um, he's he's basically much like Mike Swick. The career has just been derailed by injuries to the point where I'll still pick him over most of the division, but I can't pick him against the lead of the division because. I, I don't even know if there's a healthy Shogun in existence anymore. Um, ben Henderson, Nate Diaz. I've historically not been a fan of the Diaz brothers. I'm still not. Um, I'm coming around on Nate. He, he's adjusting. He's learning from his mistakes. He's he's learning what has screwed him in the past and is fixing it. Now if he can get his brother to do that, that would be nice. Um, but Nick can't even pass a freaking piss test. Um... I'm still going with Ben Anderson after that whole rant. He still brings the perfect collection of the things that have historically given the Diaz brothers problems. Kicks, cardio, wrestling. Not that their problems actually been cardio, but people who can keep up with them have a tendency to beat them. Um, I think Ben Anderson can do it. Um, if Nate does this, number one lightweight in the world, um, for sure. Um... And just matter of fact, I'll, I'll have to stop picking against him. Um, it will prove him that, um, despite the fact that no one else in the Caesar Gracie camp seems to be able to address their weaknesses, Nate can. Um, he's. It will prove him if he can win this fight, and, and it's not like a, a, a fifteen second uh, knockout or um, just random submission or, or you know f something flashy. Um, It'll prove him that he's learned to deal with wrestlers. He's learned to deal with light kicks. He's learned to deal with everything. Unless Ben Henderson goes out there and fights like a retard. Because people still bring up the Donald Cerrone fight and they keep going. 
Cerrone's admitted it himself. Nate got in his head. Um, I don't see that happening with Henderson. And the way, the way in my mind that I see Diaz winning this fight, it's in impressive fashion. It's in erasing all the doubts. It's in uh, bringing it home. Um, and finally proving a Diaz brother can win a title. Um, a legitimate one because screw the 170 pound division in strike force. Um, those are my picks. Love them, hate them, whatever. Peace.